I don't remember when the last time I was this frightened. I'm in Amarillo, Texas. There are wind gusts of 40 miles per hour or more. I'm in my truck camper. I've taken it off the truck. I didn't realize the winds would be this strong, otherwise I would have left it on. I have the slides out, of course, in order to be in here. I'm absolutely petrified. This is going to go on for another couple of hours. I can only hope for the best. My name is Natasha Bajma, and these are my dogs, Charlie and Luna. We're embarking on the adventure of a lifetime, a 365 day journey across America with my Ford 350 Super Duty pickup truck and a truck camper. But this is no ordinary road trip. This is what happens when a disillusioned nuclear weapons expert, going through a midlife crisis, tries to begin a new career, but can't quite get off topic. Radioactive Road Tripping is a travelogue show that documents my transformation from a longtime national security expert to a newbie director, cinematographer, and producer. In mid-November, I finally got my camper back from the RV dealer. They were still waiting on warranty approvals from Host, the manufacturer, but they made the repairs for me so that I could proceed with my plans to film the rest of my pilot episode. You may recall all the things that had gone wrong in my previous video. Some, like the black tank and the awning, were design issues. The black tank only works well if the camper is level and I'm still having issues emptying it. The awning requires a few tugs on the arm while pressing the button to get them moving. The dealer claimed to have fixed the lock, but it broke again on my second attempt. I ended up calling a locksmith and he solved the problem in a few minutes. Of course, the most pressing issue was a faulty panel on the hot water heater. That has been fixed and I have hot water again. There it is. There it is. My favorite upgrade is the stable camper system that I installed to provide additional stability when the camper is off the truck. It consists of four heavy duty bars that connect to the front jacks. Once installed, the system is super easy to use and store. When you're ready to load up the camper, you just untighten the bars and put them away for storage. The two shorter bars fit in front of the camper on folders. And the longer bars are stored underneath the camper out of the way of the truck bed. The stable camper system literally saved my bacon. It helped me get through not one, not two, but three major windstorms in Amarillo, Texas when I visited in December. The first one woke me up with 40 mile per hour plus wind gusts in the middle of the night. Charlie, Luna, and I spent several hours sitting on the floor of the camper near the center of gravity while the winds shook and rattled the slides. The main part of the camper remained quite stable and I was very impressed with the stable camper system. When I woke up in the morning, I did a full walk around inspection of the camper. There was no visible damage to the slides and later I confirmed that they are working fine. Later in the week, I experienced a third major windstorm, this time with gusts exceeding 60 miles per hour. The stable camper system, the camper, and the dogs all held up just fine. Sadly to say, I did not, and I decided to cancel my trip to Oklahoma and return to Texas early to avoid further windstorms the next week. I'm now back home in Rockport, Texas, getting ready to leave for my one-year adventure in 2022. Here's to hoping things are more smooth sailing from here on out. In case you're interested in the Stable Camper System, I'll include a link to their website in the episode description. If you want to follow my journey, please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you'd like to have access to behind the scenes content and exclusive merchandise, become a patron at patreon.com forward slash Natasha Bajima.